Hi, my name is Dan Patatucci, and we're here in the Italian Dolomites to present a video on the sport of ski mountaineering racing. Uh, this video is, comes about as a result of a lot of interest in the sport in America. Uh, we run our website dolomitesport.com and we've been posting a lot of stories and photos and our experiences racing here in Europe uh, from the last couple of years on our site and as a result we've been getting a lot of traffic and a lot of questions uh, directed to us about the sport. People in the U.S. are taking note, they're interested, there's a lot of races out in Colorado and Wyoming Pete Swenson's putting on and there's definitely growing interest in the sport. So we want to talk about uh, the gear here, we want to talk about how you can get the gear, what gear to look for, and some of the techniques in the sport. So the first thing that we'll talk about is the clothing that's needed in the sport. Uh, during the races we're using one-piece lycra suits and I decided I didn't want to wear a one-piece lycra suit here. Uh, I'm wearing still tight lycra um, but more of a normal kind of lower profile uh, outfit. Um, the suits are specifically designed for the sport. Think Nordic racing. Um, it's, it's a suit that has a hood, it's got uh, a full-length zipper for cooling yourself off, and it's got some of the features that this shirt has. Things like, again, the hood, which goes underneath a helmet easily. Helmets are required in the races. Uh, you want to be able to have a hood on underneath rather than a beanie hat, um, because you might just rip the hood off uh, if you get hot. Other features are this full-length zipper, uh, which has a large pouch inside the shirt. And the pouch is for your skins. Uh, when you get to the top of a climb, you're going to be taking your skins off very quickly. And you don't want to stop, take off your backpack, put them in. You're putting your skins in your shirt, and then you're zipping the shirt back up. And that's because it's A, faster, and B, the skins are kept next to your body. So they're warmer, the glue stays sticky, and, uh, and it's an overall more efficient system. Uh, you're also having a beacon on. Uh, they're required in the races. It's a normal beacon, uh, just like regular backcountry skiing. And also, I like to wear a base layer shirt underneath my suit. Uh, I prefer merino wool. Smart wool makes the best gear. Um, they have a variety of weights. I, I've chosen their stuff. That's the clothing. Next up, we're going to talk about the backpack. So the backpack is not just a normal hydration pack. It actually has some uh, special features that are for ski racing. Um, things like a system of a, of, a, of a holster for your skis and this metal clip, which is attached to a bungee cord built into the shoulder strap. When you take your skis off, you put them in the holster and you connect this hook to the ski and off you go. Um, your skis are on your pack instantly. Uh, the, the packs also have this water bottle holster. Seems most people are using uh, an external water bottle like this rather than the hydration hose. The hydration hose has a lot of surface area and the whole hose will tend to freeze and you're never going to get it thawed out if it freezes. So a lot of people are using these bottles. Um, it's easily accessible. Bounces around a bit, but it's, it surprisingly doesn't get in your way. And the only thing that's going to freeze up is the mouthpiece. Um, but the mouthpiece is, once you suck on it for a second, it'll thaw out. Or maybe you're going to go through an aid station where you can take another bottle that, that has hot tea in it. And it, it's not going to thaw or freeze as quickly. Um, besides that, the pack is a normal hydration pack. Uh, the, the, the shape is the same. It's low profile. It looks more like a, a base jumping pack. But it's got a, a sleeve here for the avalanche probe and it's got a pocket at the bottom that's easily opened for access to your shovel, uh, which is just a snow claw. And again, these are required in the races. Um, it weighs next to nothing. These actually are made in carbon fiber as well, even lighter. Even this, I don't really feel this in my hand. Um, and then finally in, in this pack, just one big compartment for what you're going to be carrying, which will be an emergency blanket, maybe a wind shirt, maybe a vest. Um, little else. You don't carry much in these in these events. Uh, and again, DinaFit makes this pack. It's specifically designed for ski mountaineering racing and I find it superb. Next up we have the skins. Uh, the skins are extremely light. Again, thinner material. Uh, the attachment point is only on the tip of the ski. There is no rear attachment. It just sticks onto the ski. Um, 
skins come in a variety of materials, mohair, variety of synthetics. Um, but the main thing is they're, they're light, they're low profile, they're trimmed a narrow, little narrower so you can ride your edges when you're skating on the skis. Uh, they're fast. You can, you can actually descend in these. If you point your tips downhill, you're going to be able to move pretty quickly. Uh, next up is a helmet. And for starting out, you can use a climbing helmet, you can use a bike helmet uh, if it's allowed in the races, or you can get a special mountaineering, ski mountaineering race helmet. Uh, this one's made by DinaFit, and this one is the, my choice because of this visor that's on it. Um, sunglasses are kind of an issue in these races. Uh, wearing sunglasses uphill, they steam up a bit. Going downhill, you never know what, what light you're going to be in, or maybe it'll be snowing. Uh, so I tend to go uphill with nothing on. I tend to uh, just use the visor. Uh, if it's snowing, I have the visor down. Maybe if it's not so bad, I have the visor up. But as soon as I go into downhill mode, the visor goes down. I have uh, full eye coverage. Maybe it's snowing. My eyes are protected from the wind and from the snowflakes. This is a great helmet, specifically designed for the sport, and, uh, and one that I've chosen. Okay, skis, bindings, and poles. Um, the ski mountaineering poles are basically a backcountry ski pole, but a little bit longer. Uh, I go about sternum height. Some people go as much as their chins. Uh, some people use Nordic racing poles. Uh, the key is it's stiff, it's strong, uh, you can ski with it, but you can get some power going uphill. Uh, most people use a double grip pole or a long grip pole with the rubber at the bottom. And that's because when you're going uphill, as like normal, you're in the pole in the strap like a Nordic setup. You want to be holding on tight in the starts. There's a lot of bumping and jostling about. You don't want to drop your pole. But when it comes time to descend, you want to choke down a little bit on it so you, you don't have such a long pole by holding up here. You want to hold down lower. Uh, so that, that's kind of the ski pole. Little, not such an important part when it comes to the big picture, but something to think about. Skis. The DinaFit DNA ski uh, hit the market in 2010 and has become a massively popular ski in Europe and, and growing in the U.S. For 2011, Mountain Gear is going to be carrying DinaFit's new price point race ski, which is very similar to the DNA, but it's going to be less expensive. It's going to be a ski for an entry level uh, ski mountaineering racer who doesn't want to drop in with so much cash to get started, uh, and yet they're going to have a high level, high performance ski. Uh, DinaFit's system uh, for binding is the system that is most popular in Europe. Um, the DinaFit design, meaning the, the two-prong uh, toe piece, is rules. It rules in Europe and, uh, and in the U.S. You're not going to find any other system. There's a variety of companies that make bindings, but the DinaFit system undoubtedly the most popular. Uh, for people that are using DinaFit in the backcountry already, you're going to feel right at home using this binding in that the toe piece is basically the same. It's a titanium toe piece. It's a little bit lower profile. The crampon attachment is very simple. It's not on a plate. It's just a little metal kind of tab here that, that holds the binding in. Um, otherwise, it's a DinaFit toe piece. The big difference comes in the, in the heel mechanism in that it's just a regular post. There's no DIN setting. Uh, you're in the binding or you're out of the binding. Or you're locked in for skiing or you're out of it and on this plate for climbing. And the way this little plate works is it's like a little lever. It goes up and down. Um, when it's down, you can skin. Your boot doesn't engage the binding. When it's up, you can lock into the pins. You're ready to go downhill. The post does spin, so it is somewhat releasable. I actually have crashed and I have popped out of the binding, which was good to know. So uh, eased my mind a little bit about this whole system. Uh, Overall, the ski doesn't weigh much more than a Nordic ski. Um, you're literally going to be able to run uphill with these things, and yet they ski remarkably well on the descents. So next up is what may be the most uh, important piece of gear that you're going to buy for this sport, and that's the boot. It's, it's in some ways uh, the most specialized piece of equipment. Um, I've selected the DinaFit DNA boot. Uh, I found it to be the perfect all-around boot for climbing and descending. 
Um, 90% of your time is spent climbing. You need a boot that is super lightweight, super sensitive, um, and and easily adjusted uh, for when you, when it comes time to go downhill. So again, being a specialty race boot, you're going to see some some unique things on it as opposed to a normal backcountry boot. It's a two buckle boot, as are all the race boots. Instead of any metal or ratcheting system, just these little pieces of cord. Um, you're either in uphill mode or you're in downhill mode. With the DNA, uh, you get to the top of a climb, and you've been in this flexible mode, you get to the top, you throw the lever back, lean forward a bit, the buckle engages, now you're in downhill mode. Uh, I found this boot to be perfect uphill, skis well downhill, super lightweight, and, uh, and fits me perfectly. I'm completely happy with it.